Welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Podcast. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Sometimes we come to you a little more than weekly. Uh, sometimes we only get one out a week. Uh, this week we've got a lot coming at you. We recorded Litter, which came out uh, Friday, yesterday. You talked about the election on Saturday morning. Uh, this one is about buses and the bus system at the Livingston Parish School system. Of course, they had uh, a little issue coming into the school year. We're going to talk about that, how they solved it, why why they had it, and what they're going to be doing going forward to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So welcome. Appreciate you being here. At the beginning of the school year, there was a lot of complaints, especially on social media. Parents were worried about their, their kids. I was about to say they were worried about their students. They are students, but they're their kids first. They were worried about their kids uh, coming home late, being stuck on the bus for a long time, uh, being picked up late, And uh, being on buses that were very, very, very crowded. And of course, you know, this is especially true at the beginning of the year, starting much earlier than usual. That start date keeps getting moved back starting in early August. It's hot. The school system tried to help kids out by putting water on the buses in the afternoon, but it's still very hot. And especially as we'll talk about later in the show, a lot of uh, time added, especially if there's a problem with a bus or a bus driver not showing up for work, anywhere from an extra 30 minutes to an hour on the bus in some cases. We'll talk about why that happens, but the school system heard the concerns. There were eight open bus routes to start the year, as well as five that were new. So we have 13 established bus routes that had no driver. They had a bus. There's a physical bus available for them, but there was no driver available. So the school went out and started doing five courses this year for bus driver training to try to either find full-time bus drivers or get people on a substitute list to do it part-time. So far, that's been very successful for the school system. The first class in August had 22. There were another roughly 18 in September and then 11 in August. So uh, I'm sorry, 11 in this November course. We're recording this, uh, you know, in uh, in November 15th uh, for your consumption over the weekend. But they did their best, you know, getting into double digits, trying to figure out how to fill those spaces. And so far, it has been uh, very successful. So <clears throat> when you're thinking about, uh, you know, what do you go through to become a bus driver? Well, <laughs> it's it's an interesting uh, scenario. It's classroom. And then there is the, uh, you know, on the job training, I guess you can say, but it's not quite on the job. So let's talk about it. There are 10 nights, four hours a night worth of classroom class work that is based around the Louisiana Department of Education's coursework on training bus drivers. A couple of things they focus on is first aid, uh, defensive driving when driving a bus. It's a problem. It's definitely a little different than driving just a regular vehicle, even upwards of large trucks. I mean, it's just you're driving a bus and you're in the front and it's long. It You know, there's there's a lot that goes into that. Then there's also drug and alcohol awareness. And it's not just about whether or not a driver is high or drunk. It's also looking at these kids getting on the bus. It's not their job to police that, but it is their job to report that, especially if they're being a disturbance. So understanding what's going on there with kids is a big deal and is part of becoming a bus driver. Once they pass that 40-hour course, then you're going into a commercial driver's license and getting permitted for that. That's very, very, very important, and that is probably the the most important part of the physical aspect of being able to to drive a bus. It starts off with uh, shadowing a regular bus driver to watch them drive the bus, talk to them, see how they do it. Then you're getting behind the wheel of a bus with a Department of Motor Vehicles certified bus driving trainer. You're going to run a couple of routes. Well, first you're going to learn on a course how to drive the bus. Then you're going to run a couple of routes by yourself with no kids. Finally, the last step is with that certified trainer driving a school full of kids for one, for a couple, for one route and doing that several times until you're comfortable with it. At that point, you're certified as a bus driver. Now, full-time versus part-time. Part-time is a substitute list. 
the according to Josh Day, who runs the transportation department for Livingston Parish Public Schools, that is an important part of what they do is having substitutes there because there are times when bus drivers can't make it. There might be a breakdown. But right now, a lot of bus drivers thought, well, I can't make it. I mean, I can't miss. I cannot just not go to work. So having that substitute list offers them the chance to say, well, if I got to go to the doctor today, I'm going to go to the doctor today. There is a lot of flexibility to being a bus driver, a lot of things you can do during the middle of the day. But if you could not get a doctor's appointment till, say, three, but that's usually when your route is, you there were a lot of there were a lot of bus drivers who were just skipping the doctor, just not going. Now they have a healthy list of substitutes. They have also filled those 13 unfilled routes. That would be five new and eight that were unfilled at the beginning of the year, which should be helpful for parents getting their kids home. Now, how many how many routes are there? There are 700 bus routes in Livingston Parish. I'll say that again. There are 700 bus routes in Livingston Parish that are run twice a day. So think about it. Come get the kid in the morning, bring him to school. Come get the kid in the afternoon from school, bring him home. 700 of those. There are 320 buses. So most drivers have to do two routes per, per, per run, four routes per day. They're going to do a high school route to get those kids to school. And then they're going to do an elementary and junior high route to get those kids to school. Then the afternoon, same thing. High school kids get brought home first. The bus then turns around and goes and picks up elementary students and junior high students to bring them home. So a lot of these bus drivers, not only did they not want to miss, they were technically, if they missed an afternoon route, that's two routes that have to be filled. According to Josh Day, it very much depends on whether or not it is an urban, suburban, or rural route. The more rural you get or the more outside of town you get, the longer the expanse of the route if somebody has to fill it with another bus. What that means is that a bus that's already running a route for that school will now run two, and it can take anywhere from an extra 30 to 60 minutes to get all of those kids home or get them all to school, depending on which one it is. So there was a lot of issue staffing-wise with making sure that those buses were stocked with drivers, which is what prompted a lot of the issue uh, that was on social media that was coming from parents that were worried about their kids getting to school, getting home from school, that kind of, those sorts of things, especially near the beginning of the year when it is so hot. Now, of course, there will be bus breakdowns. There will be times when the buses simply cannot function and they will have to be replaced with a another bus to handle that route as well. That happens. They are machines. They break down from time to time. However, what they're getting to with these five courses is a flush list full of full-time and part-time drivers so that they at least don't have to worry about personnel issues because that was the last problem that Josh brought up or Mr. Day brought up. They there is a turnover issue. Sometimes they go to other school systems because they might be offering, you know, a different route, different pay, uh, that sort of thing. There might be people that just quit. They don't like being a bus driver. So having these lists and actually having extra drivers helps because maybe you can go to a substitute and say, okay, we've lost five full time. Would you like one of those routes? One of them is in your area or one of them is just a bus route and you've expressed interest. So getting that, getting that list full of people has been very helpful for the school system. Of course, they're going to run two more courses in the spring, one beginning right around the end of January, probably into February, and then another one in April. And that will conclude the five courses for this year. And they'll, they will take some time over the summer to see, do we have any turnover? Is anybody leaving? Uh, or do we have to add more routes? Do we need more drivers, more full-time drivers? That sort of thing. And they will try to handle those problems as they can. So that is how the school... Uh, handles and adjusts to, uh, you know, bus driver turnover and issues. Uh, Really the important number there is that as of right now, there are over 700 routes, dedicated routes for the Livingston Parish School System, 320 drivers. So a lot of those folks are doing four routes a day, especially if they're full time. Uh, So keep an eye out for those buses when you're out there. Uh, If you're interested in becoming a bus driver, you can contact the school system, get signed up for it. They're already into this course 
but they will be running two more in the spring, as we mentioned, one probably late July, early February, and another one in April. Remember, that it's a 10-night it's a course, four hours a night. Then you get into the driving portion of it to get your commercial driver's license because driving a, driving a bus is a little different than driving a car. And then you will be focused on trying to get to a point where you can drive with kids on the bus, getting to and from school and to and from or taking them home. Once again, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you joining us for this podcast to learn a little bit about the bus system and the transportation system at Livingston Parish Public Schools. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print. We have a magazine style. Those of you watching us on video, I'm holding up a, a copy of the November 7th edition, which talks about the buses. Those of you listening, I describe it to you. It's it's just a bus on the front of the paper. Uh, it's $56 a year, $7 a month. Uh, the $56 a year is just about $1 a week. You can get this delivered to you in the uh, mailbox. We're also $5 a month. We're online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. We post these podcasts as well as our morning shows, which give you a quick little morning update every day. They're usually 10 to 15 minutes. We put those at www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. There are audio and video versions there. They are free. Uh, feel free to consume them at your leisure if you ever miss out on one. We also post these podcasts to Anchor FM, which pushes it out to all podcast platforms. So you can get it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, as well as Spotify. And of course, you can get it on Anchor FM if that's what you want to do. We appreciate that. We are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube for social media. Please give us a like and share in those places. We're coming back uh, with you. At this point, you would have heard about Litter elections and now buses uh, we'll be coming back at you we've got some real estate coming for you we're also going to discuss how the school system we're talking a lot about schools lately got 80 million dollars in improvements for real estate for Southside mega campus and Denham springs elementary and the hoops they had to jump through for that but how it's going to save the parish money in the long run especially the school system and uh, what they had to do to do that so once again my name is McHugh david publisher and editor of the news appreciate you joining us we will be back at you next time